Hi everyone, I'm Praveen and I welcome all of you to another session on OpenCV with CloudX Lab. Today we will look at thresholding. So we use thresholding to focus on objects or areas of interest in an image. We will see how we do that. There are several different methods of thresholding and we will go through each one of them. We will do the first thing, which is import the libraries and creating our function, which I've discussed before in our previous uh, videos. In case somebody is coming to this videos directly, please look at the playlist and I have gone through the setup of our basic libraries and this, this function. So first type of thresholding we look at is called simple thresholding. In simple thresholding, we define a certain threshold T. So that basically means you need human intervention. So after we define the value T, all pixels whose value is more than that certain T, the value threshold, is get set to the maximum value, which is, you're right, 255. And if it's less than the threshold, it's set to zero. Okay. So we will do and take an image. So what we do is we will take a noise picture which we had created before. And we'll first see how the picture looks like. So as you can see, this is how the picture looks like. Well, typically uh, the picture would not be in grayscale. Our, our image is in grayscale and let's just, just uh, convert it to grayscale. We then apply Gaussian blurring. The kernel size I've chosen for this particular image is 21 by 21. You may have to choose a different kernel depending upon the image you're using. And then I'm going to apply a threshold of 50. So when you apply a threshold of 50, you can see very clearly, I now have differentiated very clearly my lightest sections from my darkest sections. And you can see it over here. Okay. Now that is another type of, okay, now just let's look at the inputs we sent to our threshold. Okay, so we've sent, to see the threshold, we sent our input image, we specified the threshold we use, we specified the max value, and we specified the, the type of thresholding to use, CV2 thresh underscore binary, which is basically creates a binary, a differentiation of an image from zero to 255. And uh, as you can see, this is the picture over here. Now, the next one we're gonna talk about is called uh, CV, it's a different type of threshold functions, just called binary inverse, uh, which as you can see from the name, creates the exact opposite effect as our threshold binary. In this, the value, if the value of the threshold, if the pixel has threshold values or values greater than the threshold, it's set to zero. And if it's less than the value than the threshold, it's set to 255, the max value. So here the inputs are the same as we saw before. And when we run it, we can see a very the, we can see that the picture we've created is the exact opposite, or you could say not functional in some ways, of the CV bind of the thresh binary. Now, what you can do is you can use this mask to kind of remove certain areas. So if you want to remove the darker areas from the picture, you can see I could remove the darker areas, the square in the middle, and I'm all left is is uh, the, the, the noisy background which we had before of the black area. Now there are other met examples of simple threshold which we're gonna talk through. So the difference is largely upon how uh, you apply threshold and the impact and the way that the impact the thresholding has on the image. So we've seen the first two types as thresh binary and thresh binary inverse, in which you set a threshold, and if the value is greater than threshold, the the uh, value the value of the pixel is set to max val. 
or if it's less, it's set to zero. And binary inverse is the exact opposite, where if the value of the pixel is greater than the threshold, the value, is, the value of the pixel is set to zero and it's set to the max val otherwise. There are some other threshold functions which I'd like to introduce to you. One is called thresh underscore trunk, where if the thresh, the, the value of the pixel is greater than the threshold, uh, the value of the pixel is set to the threshold. And if it's less than that, it's just kept at whatever it is. So the pixel of values is preserved. Uh, the other one is called thresh to zero. Okay, so what we do is we if the value is greater than the threshold, you keep the pixel. If it's less than the threshold, you take it to zero. And there is the other functionality we have thresh to zero inverse, which does the exact opposite of thresh to zero, where if the value of the pixel is greater than the threshold, it is set to zero. And if it's less than the threshold, it is maintained as is. Now in this particular function, what we have done is I have uh, put, I, I, we, we're gonna output the results of all the thresholding, simple thresholding functions and along with the original image and see what it looks like. So we, what we'll do is, uh, Okay, so what we have we're putting the original image and the different different we've created five we've created five different thresholds using the five different fun uh, types of thresholding functions you've seen here, yeah? and we're gonna use PLT and create subplots for all six images. So I'm gonna run it again, and you can see the differences between all of them. So we've seen binary inverse and we've binary and binary inverse. Uh, you can see in truncation where if the values were uh, the the values are retained wherever they are less than the threshold and wherever they're more than the threshold it went to white similarly we have the two zero where the the where we truncated the where we uh, took the values that are below the threshold to zero and kept the other places, retained the values of the pixels otherwise. And here we have exactly the opposite, okay? The next type of, of uh, so as uh, the next type of thresholding we're gonna see is called adoptive thresholding. Now, as I described previously in simple thresholding, we have to set the value of the threshold. So you need to make a decision about what value of threshold you want to keep. The other problem is that this value is global. Okay, so you basically have the same threshold value across your entire picture, which sometimes is not what you want. There you get adoptive thresholding. So again, we're gonna take a noise picture and we're gonna come convert it to, to, uh, to grayscale, blur it, and we're gonna see it. Okay, so now we come to adoptive thresholding. So in adoptive thresholding, there are again a couple of types. We'll first take a look at thresh underscore mean. So in this the thresh underscore mean, we take uh, we take the uh, the input image, in our case, the blurred image. We will set the max value. And the type we set is adoptive thresh mean underscore C. Okay, so what it is, is basically the, uh, at any point, the threshold is created as a mean of the neighborhood pixels. And the uh, kernel size for creating the mean is set over here, which we call 11. Post that threshold is created, it, you apply the normal CV through thresh binary and you set it. Uh, the final value is used as a constant to adjust results. So when we use this, we can see we get a picture like this. So some noise is retained. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an another type of thresholding function where we are going to use the Gaussian. 
So in Gaussian, again, as you can understand, the thresholding value is not the uh, is not just the mean of the kernel. It's it's a weighted mean of the kernel where the weights of the uh, weights of the values of the pixel value of the pixels closest to it are given more weightage. And as you can see, it kind of does a better job in clearing the noise. Okay. Now we're just going to put, again, as we've seen before, we'll just, we're just going to put all of it together to see how it looks like. So these are the four images that we saw, the original, the one with global thresholding, the one with an adoptive mean thresholding and the one with adoptive Gaussian thresholding. The last type of thresholding we're gonna to see today is called Otsu thresholding. It is also a type of global thresholding. However, there is a certain algorithm called Otsu's, which is used to identify the threshold value. So we will see how it kind of works. So what we're gonna do is again, we're gonna take a noisy picture, make a grayscale of it, we are going to apply the global thresholding. We are going to, up on the picture, just the picture, we're going to then apply Otsu's thresholding on the picture. Okay, so while we're doing Otsu's thresholding, what we do is we just say CV2 thresh binary plus CV2 thresh Otsu. What happens is that, is that uh, the, this particular algorithm will first calculate the value of threshold and 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 uh, use that to do cv2 thresh binary now what we're going to do next is we're actually going to apply otsu's thresholding after gaussian filtering okay so we're going to apply gaussian blur and uh, and run it again okay and run it again. So now we, what we're going to do is we are, what we are also doing right now is we are also going to publish the histograms uh, of each of the picture. I'll explain that later. And we, so we have the functions here. So here we have the uh, the noisy one, the original picture with global thresholding. As you see, it does something not that great. Uh, then we're going to have the original noisy picture along with the Otsu's threshold, uh, but then it doesn't really work much. But after we have applied Gaussian filter, which is, and then we have applied Otsu's thresholding, we see a good result. Now I've put the histograms here. As you can see, you can see data only in the last histogram. The reason is that the previous two histograms, we just have pictures in which the value is, uh, is, either, is either zeros or ones. So basically everything is, either at this end or this end. And therefore we are unable to see much data in the histogram is basically hidden under the axis. Whereas in this picture, we've used the Gaussian, we've done a filtering, we've done, and then we've kind of averaged out. So you can see the, uh, you, you can see the distributions here, a, a few, uh, some of the, uh, lots of, a few of the dark pixels, a lot of the dark pixels and some light pixels, they have it here. So what Otsu does, and I mean, as an intuitive, we've explained what it does. It basically does a histogram and then decides what's a good partitioning point for the picture. Okay, so it does a histogram. It basically, you give it a picture, it does a histogram on the grayscale image and decides on what would be a good point to partition the pixel values. So in this case, the threshold value would be over here. Okay. So on this case, what I've done is I've also printed the two thresh, uh, the two ones to show the impact, uh, uh, the results of also threshold on the original noisy image and the result of the also threshold on the blurred image. Okay, just to show it how blurring has helped. So if you just apply the threshold directly on the unblurred image, really doesn't, you can't really see much difference. But if you apply it on the blurred, if you apply it on the blurred image, uh, we get a nice thresholding effect where uh, the the areas or the objects of interest are clearly highlighted, 
and the noise is eliminated. Okay. Oh, thank you. That's thanks. That's we today. Thanks for time.